let's talk about what the scanner measures. Um, all the scanners measure a certain thing, but we're talking about the S3 specifically today. I'm going to hand the time over to our expert, Dr. Ferguson, to talk a little bit more about this later. First of all, just the carotenoids. Um, we know that it's measuring carotenoids. Lycopene, lutein, beta carotene. Um, you know, probably a few years ago, the only carotenoid that you'd heard of was beta carotene, right? Uh, but uh, we know that there are um, literally hundreds of carotenoids in nature. Um, certainly in the human diet, we, uh, we regularly partake of at least a dozen of these carotenoids. They're a first line of defense antioxidant. Um, they are the colors that you find in the fruits and vegetables. And this time of year in Utah, we have a beautiful fall um, colors in the leaves, um, which remind us that those carotenoids are always there in the plants, even in the green leafy vegetables. We just don't always see them because of the chlorophyll that's in the leaf. And this time of year when the chlorophyll strips out of the leaves and you see the beautiful colors, the oranges, the reds, the yellows, it's a reminder that this is uh, nature's, uh, nature's own colors. And these, obviously, a, a diet rich in fruits and vegetables will result in those carotenoids being in your skin. The National Academy of Sciences concluded that blood concentrations of carotenoids are the best biological markers for consumption of fruit and vegetables. They basically tell us how many fruits and vegetables we're eating. Well, that's the National Academy of Sciences. Um, you know, one step better than blood concentrations, of course, is the level of those carotenoids in the cells of your body, in the skin, not just the blood. So what is actually being absorbed into the skin is what we are measuring here. Let's talk a little bit about how the S3 technology does that. Dr. Bergeson can probably explain this Thanks. a lot better than most of I us. I appreciate that. So we measure, the biophotonic scanner measures the level of carotenoids in the skin. And the level of skin carotenoids is an indicator of the carotenoids in the body. And the more, uh, as Mark said, uh, the more colorful fruits and vegetables you eat, the more carotenoids you give to your body. So the scanner measures these carotenoids using a method known as resonance Raman spectroscopy. Now, in this method, we shine blue light onto the skin at 473 nanometers, and we, uh, this light interacts with the carotenoid molecules, and the carotenoid molecules shift that light and send back light that's at 510 nanometers, so in the green spectrum of the uh, in, in, in the green color. Most of the light that we actually measure at 510 nanometers is not really an indicator of carotenoid molecules. Only a small fraction is. There are other things, other tissues, other molecules in the skin besides just the carotenoids. And so we end up getting a lot of background signal that's from these other tissues. And it becomes then uh, an important uh, job or uh, yeah, to try and understand and trying to sort out the Raman photons from the regular background fluorescence in the skin. And we'll try to help you understand how hard this is. So let's do this by an analogy. Let's suppose that each uh, photon is represented by just one grain of sand. And we'll let one grain of sand be something like about one millimeter in size. And if you think about all the blue light that we're sending to the hand, it would correspond to something like 2.4 trillion grains of sand. Now, you might ask, well, how much is that? That's enough sand to cover the massive dune de Pilat in France twice with one layer deep, one grain of sand deep. Now, out of all these special, you know, these grains of sand, you might ask, uh, how many of these grains of sand correspond to the Raman photons that we really want to measure? The answer is about 40. So you can see that this is a fairly daunting measurement. So let's imagine that you could build a special camera, and this special camera could be used as you fly over the dunes in an airplane, and you would take a picture of the sand on these massive dunes. And now you want to zoom in and try to count the number of grains of sand that you're going to, uh, that correspond to our Raman signal. And you take the picture, you zoom in, you make the measurement, and you probably wouldn't be surprised if you came up with, instead of 40 grains of sand, you got 36. Or if you made another measurement and you got 37. Or maybe you take a picture, you zoom in, you count again, and maybe you make a mistake and you count 42. 
Um, but on average, you would eventually, after you sorted through a lot of pictures, uh, you would get something like 40 grains of sand. Right, so that's some of the magic really that's going on, right? Because uh, Raman spectroscopy has actually been around since the 30s. But the application of Raman spectroscopy has taken a long time to really put into play. And part of this is because not only do you need um, optics, and in this case small enough to do the job, but you also need uh, computers and algorithms and uh, an ability to sort out the noise from the actual signal that you're trying to measure. So that's really one reason why it's probably taken till the 21st century to get a device like this that can even come close to using Raman spectroscopy to measure carotenoids.